Hey, welcome back. Let's continue our journey through this nightmare level. But it's quite brilliantly designed. It's a mishmash of everything that we have seen so far. And the controls are a bit distorted. And also um, the field of view is different. Now this is a maze part of the level and you can easily get lost even though the layout is quite simple. But all you need to do is follow this left wall until you reach your destination. Just as in any maze, you just need to follow or the hug one wall. Should've known it when we found you snoring next to Lupino's corpse. A comedian, huh? The pictures were filled. Alex and I had a few moments of glory between us. Crime fighting comrades, the best in NYPD DEA collaborative team. Good hearted macho bullshit like that. I would have given anything to have him here as my backup. No such luck. No luck at all. Good old times. Michelle looked at me from the photo. The Payne family. Happiness captured in a Polaroid moment. I had thought it would last forever. Till death do us part. I didn't want to think about it. As long as I didn't, it could never happen. But I had broken my own rule. The thought had already slipped in. Fear was rusty needles poking at my brain. Cold and scaly, it slithered down my chest. This is a moment where he couldn't help his family. And now... This is a nightmarish interpretation of the same thing. And there should be a baby room here, but instead we get another maze, which is also complicated if you don't know I the really trick. Love to watch cartoons. Captain Baseball Bat Boy is my favorite. The trick is that you can jump very far, and that the exit is right there. See. No, 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 please, God, no. Disturbing. You can slice them, dice them, shoot them full of holes, blow them to bits, vaporize them, disintegrate them. No matter what you do, they'll still be back good as new. Michelle's diary lay on the table. Now this is an important clue to the story. Michelle was working part-time in the district attorney's office. Her diary was open on today's entry. Her handwriting all pretty curves. An army dossier found its way to my desk yesterday. Valhalla? Isn't that a Norse myth? Something about Vikings? I tried to tell Max about it, but he was busy. That cute frown on his brow. Guess it's nothing. Just a mix-up at the courier service. From now on, I would always find time for her. It was a hollow promise. Too little, too late. Um, I think this is the end. <laughs> Max! No! Please, Max! Why? I didn't mean to! I'm sorry! Murderer! You killed her! Nothing like that ever happens in a real world. See, the drug is making him believe he murdered his wife. I woke up in a bad dream. My head felt two sizes too small for my brain. Max Payne. I envy your name. And the killer was smiling. Pleased to meet you. I'm Frankie to Bat Niagara. 
Niagara, as in you cry a lot? He had a baseball bat and I was tied to a chair. Pissing him off was the smart thing to do. Can you even survive that? Nothing wrong with a little laugh now and then. Take me, for example. I love to watch cartoons. Cartoon violence is a fascinating thing. Let's take a break. I need to take a leak and maybe grab a cold one at the bar. Don't worry. I'll be back to finish this off. And then, it's checkout time. Yeah, I blame the cartoon. You pay, you pay, you bastard. He swaggered out, and the door clanged shut behind him, locks clicking into place. Everyone makes mistakes. Mine hadn't been to crack jokes about the goon with the bat. He'd have cracked my skull regardless. It hadn't even been to trust a girl with a gun. I had blindly gone after the first bad guy on my hit list when I should have been aiming further up the ladder, at the head of the Punchinello family. I couldn't bring myself to be pissed at Mona. I guess I had a soft spot for a pretty face. But when somebody decides to play baseball with your head, you tend to get sore. They had dragged me back to the basement of Lupino's hotel. I was beaten, bruised, and blue. I felt like the chair I had broken to get free. All I had was Niagara's bat, sticky with my own blood. Without a gun, I'd be no match for Frankie's men. I'd have to play hide-and-seek with them. Let's see. It's Frankie's turf. We'll take care of it. a lot worse Another newspaper caption for a murder scene. Yeah. Frankie had left his calling card, a Captain Baseball Bat Boy strip, next to a sewer passage filled with bodies. You'd better not mess with Captain Baseball Bat Boy. Even my arch enemy, Bicycle Helmet Girl, swoons at the sight of me. Aha! There were enough corpses to put a mass murderer to shame. Let's get our revenge.
this has to be the one playthrough when they killed each other the most time in my experience. finish this. Things were fast going from bad to worse. The men in blue had come and gone. They had decorated the place with chalk outlines and tied it together with yellow tape. The cops who had stayed behind were dead. Frankie, his boys, and I had the place all for ourselves. Just forget about it. <laughs> just forget about it. Hey, just forget about it. That crazy witch, you should have heard her. She was a real scream when the boys caught her trying to cap the Don. Oh, that's friggin' bad. To the trio? That's even worse than what Frankie's doing to that poor bastard downstairs. She's gonna take a long time to die. The mobster muscle on the phone was talking about Mona. Punchinello's trio were nothing but bad news. She betrayed me for- There he is! me for nothing but we shall fix that more evidence that Punchinello didn't like me much the fact remains that all the victims so far identified in the Ragnarok shooting have been known criminals many of whom had large doses of V in their blood reliable sources say that Max Payne was also among those killed although no body has been recovered at this time reliable sources that meant somebody thought the Mafia had me, didn't want the cops snooping around anymore. The body would be delivered to them barely recognizable. Case closed. Don Punchinello had the power to be that reliable source, which was no news. But his news was old news. Framing me hadn't been enough. Don Punchinello had put a hit on me. He wanted me dead, and it had been important enough for him to give written instructions to Frankie about it. Max Payne should die like a dog for the trouble he's caused. Frankie, I know I can trust you to give this matter the dedication it needs. Hey! Ah! Oh, Lord, that underwear always cracks me up. What? No painkillers. There's a boss fight. The hotel bar was fast developing quite a history. True to his words, Frankie was there, having a beer. Jesus Christ. How the hell did you get loose? Got bored waiting. Thought, what the hell, we could just as well finish this here.
game over. Thank you, thank you. You've been a lovely audience. Had enough? I don't play with girls anyway. Unfair! I spotted the tail as soon as I left the hotel. A big black Mercedes. I'd seen the car before. That time it had heralded impressive explosions. Vladimir was back. Bang! You're dead, Max Payne. I might have laughed if I remembered how. <laughs> What's this supposed to be? Cops and robbers? Look, you want something with me? Get in line. Peace, man. Relax. You know you are a real news item. Armed and dangerous. I am going to make you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. It's a bum rap. I've been framed. Well, that's a moot point. Whatever you did or did not do, I'm sure you had good reason for doing it. Want to hear me out? I'm listening. Pancinello messing with V is bad for business all around. But that's not all. There is this guy, Boris Stein, used to pull jobs for me. He's the captain of the cargo ship Charon. Now the bastard Turncourt has gone over to the other side, Poncinello's. The ship's loaded with high-res hardware, guns, my business. If Poncinello gets hold of that cargo, he's won and I have lost and you'll have your work cut out for you. If you want to get to Poncinello, you will need heavy-duty persuaders. I am just the man to get them for you. Change the ship back under my flag, maybe pop two in the traitor dime's head while you're at it. You'll get enough guns to start the apocalypse. You in or out? Let's get this show on the road. Vladimir was one of those old-time bad guys with honor and morals, which made him almost one of the good guys. None of us was a saint. The Brooklyn Riverfront was a maze of rusty containers, sharp bone cranes looming up from the snowstorm. On a night like this, you couldn't help but think of the dark army of dead men sleeping with the fishes, cement shoes in line. No minotaur lurked in this labyrinth, but somewhere out there, on the clanking deck of his cargo freighter, the All skipper right. of the Chiron was waiting, like the ferryman of the river Styx. All right, this entire part is one crazy outdoor chase and it's not too long not too short we're gonna resume it uh, in the next episode if you like this one hit that like button stay tuned subscribe and i'll see you in the next episode